Hey everybody, it's Chris. Thanks so much for joining me today. So today we're going to be working on an 18 inch round that I, uh, I will eventually turn into a Lazy Susan. Um, but don't let this deter you from trying this particular technique, these particular colors. Um, even though I'm painting on an 18 inch round and it's going to be a Lazy Susan, it doesn't mean that you can't do the same colors, the same technique. Um, any version of this on any particular medium that you want to do it on. It could be on a canvas, it could be on coasters. Um, really, don't let that deter you just because you do not want to make a Lazy Susan or you do not want to paint on an 18 inch round doesn't mean that you can't do this project. It's just how I'm going to do it today. I had a suggestion off of my Facebook page from Chris. What a great name. She had suggested using the colors of navy, rose gold, and gray. And so um, I really love navy and rose gold together. I guess I hadn't ever thought about putting gray with it, but we're gonna see um, how that looks. I think it's gonna be actually quite pretty. So today I'm going to do a swipe technique with the Shelly Art Style. So I already have my pigments mixed, mixed up with my um, base. And I'll just give you a quick rundown um, just what I've used for the colors. Um, the navy is kind of a tough one to get to, but um, the closest that I found to really super deep blue is the Indanthrene Blue from Liquitex. And then I also ordered some Indigo, um, I believe this is the High Flow, yes, Indigo High Flow Acrylics. So these two were mixed together um, because I felt like this was actually a little bit deeper blue than this. And when I did mix it into um, my base, it did I did see the difference and it was a deeper blue. So hopefully we get the, a nice and deep navy blue out of it. Um, the other color that I have is gray. And I did mix a little bit of white mica powder in it from Counter Culture, um, just to lighten it up a bit and also to give it kind of that iridescent um, shimmer that we're looking for. And then I also have some rose gold mixed up. This is actually the Deco Arts Metallics Rose Gold Paint. I did not add as much of my base to it as I normally would because it's already kind of a thinner paint and I don't feel like it probably has a lot of pigment to it. So I didn't feel like I could really add a lot of base to it, but I wanted to add some base to it because I thought, well, what if that um, causes it not to react or to give me the effect that I want? So. I will put a link in the description below to the first Shelly Art video that I did um, that gives you all of the measurements. I have all of my supplies laid out so that you can see exactly um, what is involved with this particular technique. Um, my cell activator, I'm using a white cell activator and I'll quickly go down. The recipe for that is one teaspoon of titanium white, one and a half tablespoons of Floetrol, one teaspoon of glue. Um, I use the Elmer's Glue All. Um, a couple of drops of wood conditioner, and then I have five drops of the Liquitex acrylic ink. So this comes in a bottle. In my black cell activator, I use the carbon black Liquitex ink. So um, my base paint today, I have, this I believe is the Valspar white um, satin. And I have just, I don't have a lot of this left, so I'm just about done with this. So I'm gonna put out a nice puddle here. I wanna make sure that I have enough to stretch and cover the edges. But you don't wanna put so much on there that, um, that you're dumping off the color and the patterns and the, the great um, effects that you have with this technique. So I think we'll start with that. I don't feel like that's quite enough though. I feel like by the time we start to tilt, it's we'll just lose it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. So this is just regular house paint um, that I put into a bottle. Um, I stir it up really well. You can see there's a few little bubbles in it. Um, sometimes I do torch that to try to get rid of those bubbles. Sometimes you can just lightly blow on it. And I have found that if you don't do something to try to get rid of the bubbles, that um, you can end up with like little pits in the in the actual surface of the painting. So sometimes I'll just torch it real quickly to see if I can get rid of some of that. And then I've got a little plastic plate here with a small um, putty knife, and I will use this to do my cell activator swipe. So I think we're going to start with some of the gray. I ran out of lids for my cute little containers, so I had to improvise and put some saran wrap on it. 
I think what I'm going to do is just kind of lay some color out onto the white and, and not necessarily a pattern, but just to get the color onto the surface because as we swipe through it, it should kind of blend things together and make sure that we have some good color on here. And then this is my hopefully navy blue. I should, it will definitely dry darker than this, but it's definitely a very pretty color. So this is kind of like the pseudo swipe, I guess, where you put a lot of color on and then swipe through it. I do wanna make sure that that blue is represented too, because I have to say the blue and the gray look very pretty together. And then if we add that, I'm not sure that I have enough color though. I do wanna make sure that it's really, really saturated with color and really beautiful. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more on there just to be sure. And then this is the rose gold. As I said, I didn't put a lot of my base in this just because that rose gold is kind of um, a little bit of a thinner paint. And as I said, I'm not sure that it has a lot of pigment in it. So I was afraid that I might kind of stretch it out into nothingness. So these are very pretty colors. I'm anxious to see what it looks like once we go through it. And then I do think I wanna put just a little bit more blue on the top and some of these areas, just to make sure that I have all the colors throughout. Okay. So as this has kind of settled out, I do think I may add just a little bit more white to the edge of it, just to be sure that we will have enough paint to cover the edges. Because, um, and I guess I didn't tell you what I do to prep when I'm doing these wood Lazy Susans. So this is a pine round, and I lightly sand it down, first of all, because sometimes they have kind of some rough edges on them. And then I use my Bullseye 123 primer, which is in a spray can, and I will do the edges as well as both sides of it. Because what I've found in the past is if I don't prime these, they will really warp as they dry. And they will still warp a little bit, but not nearly as much as they do if I don't prime them. Okay, this is my cell activator that I've just mixed up today. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it onto my plate over here. I was kind of torn. I'm. I'm still a little bit torn. I almost feel like I should use the black cell activator on this, but I feel like with the white, or excuse me, with the um, blue, I'm not sure the black will show through with it. But I am a little bit torn on what, if I should use white or the black. All right, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use my black cell activator. So this is um, the same recipe that I just gave you. So instead of the titanium white paint, I used oxide black in it. So I think it's very important to use the right type of paint in your cell activator um, because not, not just any white or any black will work for it from what I've learned in the Facebook group that I'm in. So um, if you decide to take the Shelley Art course, um, I will put a link um, down below that has a coupon code to get a percentage off of it. If you do decide to take the Shelley Art course, um, there's actually a Facebook group just for the Shelley Art people. And there's a ton of people in there that are so helpful and kind of give you tips and tricks on what has worked for them. So that's how I know that the Oxide Black or the Titanium White are the two the either the white or the black that you want to use for your cell activator. So I'm using my little putty knife and I'm just gonna take my cell activator and put it onto the putty knife like so. And then we're going to lightly swipe through like so. And then I'm gonna wipe it off on my plastic over here so that I don't drag it back through again. And we're gonna start here and come across and you can see all these cool cells popping up. So I like to kind of start out here in my white and drag across lightly. 
And I kind of want to drag through all of this if I can. And what I've found is if you drag from the outside in, you can see I have heavy lines right here. But as I tilt, most of that should tilt off of, it will tilt off of the project. So I'm gonna see if I can come in here and lightly come up and across. And then I might try to blow just a little bit right there in the center because I feel like I really have some cool things going here, but I feel like my cell activator is kind of getting lost there in the center. And maybe if I start here and lightly bring it down a little bit to try to get those on there like so, that was a little bit better. So I think what I wanna do is see if I can put a little bit of cell activator right here, and then I'm gonna blow it and see if I can get it to blow out across. So just like that. Because I like that heavy concentration of the black. Um, and I think I'll do just a little bit right here. So I'm just putting little dots in the areas where I don't really have great um, swipe going, but I have some really pretty colors. So I'm just gonna put a few drops here and there and blow those out and then those will tilt along with the swipes. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to put a little extra here. There we go. And I just have some little plastic cups underneath my um, surface here just to keep it up off of the table. Oh, that was a good one. And I'm just gonna kind of let that come back in. And then I think we might be ready to tilt. Now I think everything has um, come back up off of the surface of the Lazy Susan. Kind of still want something there. Look at these really cool cells. Let me see if I can pick this up a little bit more so you can see closer. And hopefully this will focus. I'm working with a new light, so I'm hoping that, I'm hoping it provides really great light without reflecting really badly in the paint. I just kind of want this one to pop up just a tiny bit. See all the really cool cells though? That's because of that cell activator. And I really think this is quite beautiful when it's just the cell activator on the white. So that's kind of why um, I kind of want to do like a swipe and I kind of wanted that white um, with the black cell activator because I just think that's like super cool looking. And don't be afraid to like, you know, add more drops of cell activator or, you know, kind of play around with certain areas if you don't love how it looks. Because now is the time to do that before you start to tilt. I think this is gonna be really pretty. And the cool thing about this um, particular style with the Shelly Art um, is all of the pigments are um, metallic or iridescent. So once this gets resined, it'll really, really be beautiful. I'm just gonna use my torch and just quickly pop some bubbles and see if I can get rid of some of those air bubbles that might cause some issues of not looking quite so pretty as it dries. And I think we're ready to tilt. All right, so let's hope that we can move this little baby around and that I have enough paint on the surface to stretch it out and make it really beautiful. So I'm just gonna kinda go across one way. Just kinda wiggle it around. And as I said, I'm not super worried about the edges not being really beautiful because those are gonna tip off anyway. All right, so I'm just gonna go right like this and then bring it back up, let it level out. And then that should give me some really pretty edges. And then while I'm over here, I wanna go off of this side as well because I've got the weight of the paint down here. So one thing um, that's important to do when you're working with a cell activator is that you want the, um, you can see the with the black cell activator, you want that to go over the edge. So it kind of hangs onto the edge and then it kind of helps it to stretch. So I'm just gonna kind of let it come down to this edge over here. And let it go over and kind of let this 
I just slide it over too while I'm down here and I've got this paint right here. There we go. And then we're gonna let it come down to this other side and stretch it out. I do wanna go right here though while I'm here so I can get rid of that little bit of copper that I have and get that cell activator over the edge. And then I'm gonna take the paint back down towards the middle. And now we can go down here off of the right, my right side. It's very pretty. You can see that my blue is kind of breaking up a little bit. I may not have had quite enough pigment in that. I do wanna go off this edge as well. And then we'll take it off over here. As I said, I want that cell activator to get over the edges. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and let it kind of come back down and even out my paint a bit. Because right now I have a high concentration on the right side. So I'm just gonna slowly let this kind of creep back down. Not sure that this is what Chris had in mind, but it's pretty, isn't it? When she suggested these colors. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm just gonna set this down so that you can see it. And we've got some really nice edges going. I will go around and touch up and just make sure that um, the edges are completely covered because the white house paint is much brighter than what the bullseye primer is. So I want to make sure that my edges are completely covered around the base of the piece. And if you were using a canvas, you would do the same thing just to make sure that all of your edges are complete. So as I said, this will this blue will dry, well actually all of the colors will dry darker, um, as you probably already know, that your colors always dry darker than what they are when they're wet. All right guys, so that is a completed 18 inch round. We used rose gold, hopefully navy once it dries. Um, hopefully I can wait long enough for this to dry to take a picture for you so that you can see exactly what color it is um, when it is dried. And as I said, I will put a link to the first video that I did on this particular technique down at the bottom of, um, in the description of this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you are all well. Thanks again. Bye-bye.